Warning, this episode contains scenes of ugly architecture and questionable colors. Viewer discretion is advised. Founded by monks over 300 years ago, the city known today as Starlight Shores has always attracted Sims on a mission. Aspiring singers, musicians, and other performers make the pilgrimages here looking for their big breaks. Who will be the next unknown Sim with the talent, passion, and determination to take them from rags to riches and make their dreams come true? What's up guys, Rikowski here, and today we are judging and rating all of the builds in Starlight Shores. Before we get started, if you enjoy Sims content that praises the accomplishments and details of the older Sims games, then please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. It really helps me make more of these videos for you all to enjoy. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Also, if you want to choose which world we review next, then head down to my community tab where you can vote. The polls are getting closer and closer, so every vote counts. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Oh my god, this world has been on the poll for like six or seven polls? That's like three months. Well, anyway, here we are. Welcome to Starlight Shores. Now, I know it's an unpopular opinion, but Showtime is perhaps like my second favorite expansion pack for The Sims 3. I know it's not in people's top picks. They much prefer things like seasons or pets. But for me, like Showtime encapsulates like the whole fame system, chasing the celebrity lifestyle. And that's really been something that like I've been interested interested in and quite frankly recently been trying to accomplish. But this world isn't about me, it's about the Sims, EA, and the houses, right? So we're gonna jump in pretty quickly and get started because there are 27 lots in this world. So we got another big one, but that's okay. I'm gonna actually try to do it in two videos instead of three because even though there's so many houses, a lot of them are quite a bit smaller. Like they're like one bedroom or two bedrooms, so we should be able to get through some of them quite quickly. But there's only one way to find out. I'm gonna jump into the first house and I'll see you there. Let's get started. First up is Apex. And before we get into the build, I just want to draw our attention to the Sim who lives here. His name is Darren Lott, and he is a great kisser, commitment issues, charismatic, schmoozer, and evil. And if you actually go into his relationship, this is something the Sims 4 could never do. Look at all this. He's got all these enemies, all these people who hate him. He only has one good friend. It's so funny. But we're not here for the lore, really. We're here for the builds to see if they can relate to the lore. So looking at this, this is kind of an ugly house. Like, I don't really like this at all. I don't like the tile on the outside mixed with the wood. It doesn't really suit the mid-century style in my opinion. These windows are a little too big and they're off center. The roof is a little low. They just change the wall texture randomly in the middle of the house. It's just like a few things that like I don't really do with houses and I haven't really seen before. So it's kind of like a little bit unsettling. But I mean like I guess it's fine. It's not super hideous. I'm glad they didn't have like green tile on the outside I guess. So let's just jump inside and see what we get. Okay I will say the inside is a little bit nicer than the outside. The first thing I noticed was this bathroom room, this showerless bathroom as usual. However, it's a nice like black and white gray scale kind of color palette. I really enjoy that. They still have the tub being white and the toilet being white. So that's something that I really enjoy. The kitchen looks remarkably small. Look at this. Oh my God, the fridge and the stove are next to each other. But of course they have a kitchen sink, which is something that I enjoy. But it just seems like a little bit cramped. And then you have it leading to the back door. I would have put the back door like from the garage or something. It just seems like Sims are going to get stuck in the middle there. And the whole thing kind of looks really cohesive until you get to the yellow and black bumblebee bedroom, which is really not my style. Now, the one thing I was saying before is that I don't like when things are off-centered on the nightstands unless you put other things on them. So for this, like the lamps being off to the side makes sense because you have a phone here, you have an alarm clock here, so that's at least all right. But yeah, as a whole, like it's really kind of boring and basic. Like when you do a grayscale palette like this, you need at least like one splash of color to make it interesting. And I don't think the yellow is hitting the mark. I would have chose something else. They could have done red, like a Don Lothario bed bedroom. They could have done blue because it's stereotypically masculine. Like, I don't know about Bumblebee. It's just not for me. But yeah, coming back outside, it looks like we're starting off in classic EA style and the clouds are all like dusty and like dark and stuff. And it's kind of like giving me the vibes as to how this is going to go. I don't like this house. I don't really like the idea. I don't really like the execution. I really like the sim though, like great lore, but that's not really what we're here for. I'm going to give this house a three. Oh God, I was so excited for this because this is one of my favorite packs, but like I haven't really been through the builds. I always build my own house and now I'm starting to see why some people were scared for me. So I guess we'll see. 
Next up is Bungling Bungalow. My first thought is we have another ugly EA greenhouse, which is something that we've seen in some of the older worlds. So this is gonna be like a nice little trip down memory lane. I will say the shell is actually pretty good. I like the structure of it. I like the architecture. I really like the porch. I like the roofing, even though it's a little bit weird. The windows are all right. It's just a big, ugly greenhouse in an EA world as usual, right? And the other thing is that it's a bungalow, but it's got two stories. Like, I'm not sure if this is like an architectural term, but like where I live, when you say bungalow, it means a one story house specifically. Oh, I kind of take back the windows. Look at this side, the side hidden by the big tree. They love doing this. They hide their ugliest side with trees, but I see it. I see the mix matched windows. I see the curtain sticking through. I see the weird bump out. So I'm not really impressed with that. Oh, and fun fact, these Sims are kind of like environmentalist Sims. So let's jump inside and see what we get. Oh my goodness. Okay. So like they were kind of given like the hippie vibe and now I see like a green guitar with pink flowers on it. So I don't necessarily hate it. The inside is arguably uglier than the outside, but I do prefer it. I do prefer too much color than too little. And I like how they kind of mix it up a little bit with some kind of like basic purples and greens, if that makes sense. This bathroom is out of control and of course has no shower as usual. Now, this is the thing. I know in some worlds or in like in some countries, baths are more common, not in Los Angeles. Like you would be expecting a shower. Goodness me, but they have a baby poo bathroom over here. Where's the kitchen? I got to get a good look at this thing. Oh, it's a baby poo kitchen with a green trash can and a purple one. My goodness. See, this is the thing. Like if I zoom out, I really love about 20% of these colors. Like 20% of this floor plan is just spot on. Love the splashes of color, but they just surround it with a bunch of other questionable choices. Like I understand like the two different color nightstands. That's kind of nice, but why would you have it like in front of this wall with these curtains? It's a little too much. It's a little too much for me anyway. The kids room is kind of cute though. Okay. Let's go upstairs. I expected no less than another bathroom. Oh, thank God a shower. I just saw the shower. That's so exciting for me. But yeah, like looking upstairs too, like it's a lot of different colors and I have fallen in love with houses that do kind of do this kind of style. But the houses that I've loved definitely did a better job than this. They had a little more cohesion, a little bit more harmonization and just like a better use of their color. I'm gonna check the garage too, just in case. Oh, they have bikes. Okay, that's a plus for me because remember how I said they were environmental Sims? I was gonna say like, if they're living like every other wasteful LA person, I'm gonna be mad. But the bikes show that they they do indeed care. Okay, coming back outside, I'm a little bit perplexed because I really do appreciate that they went for something, even if they didn't quite pull it off. I still hate the outside though. Like they just ruined it with this green color for me. We all know how I feel about green. But at the end of the day, like the architecture is pretty good. The floor plan was all right, if not a little bit unique. They do have the bikes for the lore. Mm, I don't know. I'm going to draw it down the middle for this one. I'm going to give them a five. This is not a five that I'm giving for like an average house, right? This is a five because they got 10 out of 10 on some things and zero in others. Next up is the classic getaway. Okay, looking at this, I guess it's like a little bit of a Mediterranean LA style, right? Like they got the arches in the front here, the entryway. The windows are really nice. I think these windows are from Showtime, so that's kind of nice to see. Oh God, they have a pickup truck, how ugly. But anyway, going into the backyard, we have the brick masonry I like. I kind of like the pool. If not, it's a little phallic for my taste, but you know, whatever. It's EA after all, there has to be a dick move in it, right? Okay. So looking at the landscaping, I, uh, it's, it's a little bit basic, but we are in LA. So I guess there's not going to be like bushes and flowers everywhere. It's going to take an inordinate amount of water in order to keep that up. But there's no real like ugly surprises, right? Like I don't see any weird windows, any weird wall colors or anything like that. So let's jump inside and see if they hit it in there. Okay, this is all right. So I want to just mention that this house was inherited by them from their great aunt. So it might have a little bit of old lady style and it'll still make sense. And I definitely agree with that with these couches. My friend's mother has this this exact same pattern on her couch. My goodness. Ooh, the kitchen's kind of cute. It's nice and small and compact, right? And like they're three single guys. Like, I don't know how much they're going to be cooking unless one's like a cook, right? Oh God, a yellow bathroom. Really? Why did you have to make them yellow? These are not default swatches. This was intentionally done. So that kind of bothers me. But overall, like the colors are pretty good. Everything seems quite cohesive and kind of goes together. I'm seeing a lot of red undertones, like pinks, yellows. It's a call. It's all like in the same end of the color wheel. Oh, look at that. They actually used like crooked stairs. That's really hard to do in The Sims 3. Well done. So we'll give an extra point for that. But going upstairs, we have more ugly tile. Hmm, I don't know. This wood flooring, I guess, is all right. It just doesn't go with the rest of the house. This is like really kind of cramped upstairs too. I'm kind of wondering, like, this is so different from what we've seen recently, right? Like we've seen such big bathrooms and big houses. This is kind of going back to what we're used to. So I'm a little bit kind of taken aback. I guess we should have done these in a more strategic order. Thank God for a white bathroom with a shower. I like that. Hmm, I don't know. I don't really like any of the bedrooms. Oh God, I hate this 
bathroom. Look at this thing. This is like out of control. I bet this was the old lady's bathroom. This is exactly kind of like what I think she'd be going for. Except I don't know how I feel about the tub right in front of the window. Like I don't mind having light on you like when you're taking a bath, but I always try to like move it like a tile away, create a nice open space for some privacy. Or you can even use like platforms and stuff and half walls to like private it in. This is a little too much for me. I mean, look, you can see them taking a bath from right there and you can see it from the street. But I guess that's just a little bit nitpicky. I don't know. It just wasn't really inspiring to me. And like they did do like a lot of different colors and textures. I don't think a lot of them worked. I think some of them worked kind of with the style of it. But as a whole and as an EA build, it just really isn't for me. This is not the strongest start we've ever had. My goodness. I'm going to give this one a six. I mean, I've definitely seen worse. And now that we've seen a few kind of builds in Starlight Shores, I think I know where the average is going to be. And this is about where it's going to happen. And I don't know how that's going to work out for 25 more houses, but we'll see. Next up is Cruiser Villa. This is kind of a nice, simple house. This is like a little bit too basic for me, but at least they didn't make any bad choices. I kind of like the landscaping. I like that they just put like a few bushes. I like the flower pots. The gray color actually kind of works. I'm usually not a fan of gray, but sometimes it can do well. What I really like though is like the porches. I like how they were able to just use like one normal roof and they just kind of like cut out a porch at the back and they cut out a porch at the front and it makes it look like really balanced and really well done. If you struggle with like your roofing and stuff, just try to make a box and then cut out the parts that you don't want instead of adding bump outs. It'll make the roofing a lot easier and I think that's kind of the way that they went with this one. But you guys are building for fun. This is like a professional EA developer, right? So we're not going to give as much slack for them. So let's jump inside and see what else we get. The first thing I notice is the bathroom sink in the kitchen. My goodness. And it's like solid metal. So it's reflecting the light from the ceiling right into my eyes. So that's all I can see. Going in here, we have a mix of baby poo and regular poo bathroom, but at least it has a shower. That's all right. I kind of like the old fashioned style, actually, like just looking at it from this side. Like I really like the jukebox. I like the dark woods. I like the wooden floor even. Even if the wall color is not something that I'm interested in, I think it goes really well together. And these girls are like best friends forever. So they're kind of like sharing their like house together or whatever. They have identical traits. If we go into their symbology, you can see they're all flirty, absent-minded, social butterflies, party animals, and excitable. They're even in the same order. My goodness. Oh my God. They even have the same favorite color, the same food, and the same favorite music. That's something I haven't seen ever, I don't think. That's kind of an interesting twist too, because then you can see like how they kind of go differently. But the house doesn't really like reflect that. Neither of their bathrooms are yellow. Nothing is really yellow except for this horrendous wall. So I'm not really sure what they're going for with that. But their bedrooms are not ugly or anything. They just kind of look like basic, like my first Sims build bedrooms, you know? They got the bed, they got the two nightstands, the two lamps, and they got the computer, right? I don't know, coming back outside, like these are just not my colors. I hated pretty much all of the interior colors and my favorite color that they used was the gray for the outside. And if my favorite color is gray, look at my room. Like I love color, but if I'm liking the gray, that's a problem. But again, like the shell is all right. The landscaping is kind of pretty and they have like a little bit of terrain manipulation. So they were kind of doing their diligence. It just really isn't my style. I'm going to give it a four. I can't believe how uninspiring this world is so far. I really hope we get like a nice surprise, beautiful thing in the future. But you know, that doesn't always happen. Next up is the Dweller's Dwelling. Yay, another ridiculous EA named house. Okay, but you know what? Looking at it again, we have another suburban -y style, but I love these colors. This is my type of purple and my type of blue. I think they look really beautiful next to each other even. I just don't really like the roof color or the window colors. Like if you're gonna go for it, then you may as well just like go all the way. I just wanna peek in the garage quickly. Oh, another cheap car with different doors. I'd love it. Yeah, going around the house, like not too much landscaping or anything. Conrad Anderson, he's a single guy who's apparently a total slob. My goodness, I can see some ugly mess inside already, but but that's like kind of his story, right? So like he's supposed to have like a little bit of an ugly house, but I don't understand why it's these colors. Like I feel like somebody with like a little bit more like of a creative mind would have have a house this color. I would expect something a little bit more dilapidated. This looks like brand new. Okay, I'll stop rambling. Let's jump inside. Okay, I do see messes everywhere. We got magazines. We got the VR thing sitting there. We got toys. My goodness, this guy's so childish. And like, it's like, is he going to remain single forever? Absolutely. Especially with this wallpaper. It's ugly green and has fighter jets on it. I don't understand. It's never been my thing. My goodness. Two computers and a TV. That is so straight guy. My goodness. Look at this robot. He's got everything. He's got space up here. Okay. So his whole thing is like, he's a man child, right? Like he's got like whiskey and toys, right? So that's really what we're going to be expecting. I feel like he wouldn't have a fancy coffee machine. I feel like he would have like, you know, like a regular like coffee pot coffee machine but that's something a little bit nitpicky. The kitchen is ugly as I would expect. 
respect. The bathroom is actually nice. Like, well, it's a little bit too many tiles. I wouldn't have put them on the bathtub down here, but at least they tried to go for something like a little bit more white and plain. I hate the race cars, but I love the colors. I love this golden yellow and I love this purple and I love them together. Like, why would you put them next to a green fire lamp? Like, oh my God, what's happening? This house is like really conflicting me. Like, I love certain parts of this. I just don't see it as appropriate for him. But then some of the house is really appropriate for him because like you have like the whole slob thing. This is very whimsical. This is very out there. And you know what? It's a little bit more my style. And I think people will disagree with me, but I do like this house and I think it's got a lot going for it. It's not a 10, but you know what? I'm going to give it a nine because at the end of the day, this house isn't perfect and I don't even really have the advice for it. Like, I'm not sure if they should dial it back a bit or just go a little further with it. But I think either way, like it like something needs to be tweaked a little bit. Next up is Elfin. I have no idea what the hell that means, but this house is very similar to the previous house. It has the same bushes. It has a gray exterior, although this one is not siding. It's more of a stone and it has like the similar kind of porch kind of being cut out of the house. That being said, they did add a little bit more of a dynamic roofing. They attempted to use gabled roofs, which is very brave for EA, but it's just so uninspiring. Like I feel like they went for quantity over quality for this world, which is kind of what they used to do in like the older world. So this is probably what I should have expected. I don't know. I just expect more when I spend like $40 on an expansion pack, I guess. Oh, well, let's jump inside. Okay, this is bizarre. Look how empty this house is. Like, I know they're newlyweds and they just moved in, but one dining chair, that's a little bit weird. The couch and the TV just has like nothing else around it. There are ways to show poverty or like unpreparedness for living on your own without just having an empty house. And if you're gonna go for empty, go for really empty and go for like garbage equipment, right? Like just make it a little bit more convincing. I cannot stop staring at this piss yellow shower. My goodness. Like, I know I wanted showers, but like, why did they make it that color? It doesn't go with the bathroom. If they just made the, like the shower white, like the rest of the stuff, then it would have been fine. And of course the kitchen has a bathroom sink as usual. My goodness. The bedroom is really small too. And it, like, it just has nothing to do with the rest of the house. I feel like the bedroom is from an entirely different house. Oh, I don't like how the back door goes right in front of your bed too. That's kind of weird. Okay. Like, I don't really know what to say. Like, this is, this is appalling. I don't like the style. I don't like the colors. I don't like the concept. I don't even really like the shell. It's just like not ugly. So I'm trying to give it like credit, but that's not really what we're looking for. We have been blown away even by EA in some of the worlds. So there's no excuse for something this boring. I'm going to give this one a three as well. One of my viewers is constantly keeping track statistically of like how the worlds are scoring and they're going to be mortified by the results of their calculations after this episode. My goodness. Next up is Eternal Estate. So this house looks very similar too, although this one is a little bit more complex and dynamic. So we're going to give it a little bit more credit. It's also in like a pale blue and not a gray. These are such weird compliments. I'm just trying to dig for something, I guess. But anyway, looking at the roof, they did a really good job. This is really not characteristic of EA. Usually when they have a bunch of bump outs, they make everything way too tall and ugly. But here everything actually lines up and is cohesive and they're all at the same angle. So well done. I even like the windows too and the port porches are a little bit more dynamic as well, just because they have those bump outs, the fences, and they're just like not kind of clumped into the build. Although I do see a foosball table, so that's going to bother me. But these Sims are kind of like people who would have one. They're kind of like four mixed matched single friends who are trying to make it in Starlight Shores. So I get it. Ooh, and they have a fire pit, which I always like. Okay, let's jump inside. Okay, this is a little bit better. I know it's like yellows and greens, which are not really my favorite colors, but this definitely looks a little bit more cohesive and it looks a lot more realistic. It looks like they got some secondhand furniture and they're going to play their like video game system. Oh my God, I didn't really see this. Look at this green kitchen. My goodness. We have classic EA style. We have the fridge next to the stove. We got green and yellow tile mixed together. You know, we have it all. This is probably my favorite room because everyone has had a female roommate who lives like this, who just has a bed and a bunch of crap all over her room. You know, this house has ugly checkered floors for both bathrooms. However, they do have a bathtub and a shower, which I like to see. And I know I've been complaining about it a lot in the last few episodes, what I would really like to see is a bath shower combo because that's what most houses, especially in the United States have. Like most houses have like a tub that has a shower with it. So that way you can do both. I don't know why they don't make more of those for the Sims and they don't put them in the builds. But looking around, like all of the bedrooms kind of have very little things and just have kind of like garbage and clothes kind of lying around, which is really characteristic of like young Sims trying to make it, I guess. And I do like how all the furniture is mix matched and this yellow arrow thing, I didn't even even mention it because I think it's the boldest thing in the whole house and it still doesn't even do much for me but I do know how young people kind of get these like ugly things and try to decorate their house with it like 
ooh, I found this garbage on the side of the road, you know? Like, I used to do stuff like that too. However, now I'm older, wiser, and have taste, so that's not really gonna cut it for me. Now, coming back outside, I do definitely see that this is stronger than the last couple houses of the similar style, but it still doesn't get my blood going. It still doesn't get me excited and interested and inspired, which is really the main reason why I play The Sims. But if we're grading it against, like, the curve of Starlight Shores, well done. I'm gonna give this one a seven. Oh God, if this is a seven, I don't even know if we're gonna get higher than this. Like, I'm looking around at the shells and I'm just thinking, like, I don't know if it's gonna get much better, but you know what? Sometimes we jump into the house and we get, like, a really pleasant surprise. So let's just keep our fingers crossed. Next up is Grace Place. Ooh, this is the American Dream white picket fence. It's kind of bright. Look at this shadow like over my face from my hand. That's half from my lights, but half from the monitor from this house. Now these are like identical twin sisters, but they have nothing in common. So it's kind of like the opposite concept of that previous house with the two best friends who are the same. I do really like the landscaping. I feel they could have done a little bit more detail, maybe like some lattice fencing around, but I like the pink bushes. I think it goes really well with the white. The one thing I would change is the roof color. The roof color doesn't seem to go very well with this house. And actually the roof in general is a little bit ugly. They kind of did the EA style that I was a little afraid of. The back has like the lattice fencing, which is something that we've seen in other worlds, but they usually do it a lot nicer. This is just kind of sticking out over the edge. Not really inspiring. Yeah, I don't know. I need something to perk me up. Let's jump inside and see if we get it. Okay, this isn't so bad. There's a few things I noticed right off the bat. I noticed the living room in the front and I noticed the green fridge and stove next to each other. So let's just break this down. I love this living room. I love the color. I think it's nice and bright and dynamic, but it doesn't really hurt my eyes like the other house, which is nice. This pisses me off to no end. I don't even have to explain it if you've seen any of my other videos. Going in here, look at this vanity thing. That's very pretty. I think this came with the world as well. I may be mistaken, but it is nice to see, and it's very Starlight Shores. Like, I don't know. Like, I wish I had a vanity. Like, I'd be getting ready for my videos, powdering my face, powdering my nose, you know, the powder that goes on your nose, and just kind of getting into the spirit, you know? Sometimes that's nice, and especially, like, if you're auditioning for stuff like I used to do tons of auditions when I was younger and I used to get so nervous and sometimes feeling pretty just helps with that now looking back here hidden behind the hideous fridge and stove we have a beautiful pink and blue desk seating area they have a laptop going on that's really nice oh and one of the other things I noticed right off the bat is that they finally use that tub shower combo I was talking about this is what I mean if you have one bathroom in your house use that well I guess they have two bathrooms but if you only have one this will suffice because then you can shower in it you can bathe in it you can just do whatever. Oh, I just noticed they have a hideous green car. Look, they painted their big lemon green. My God. Ew, and it's even got like an uglier door attached to it. Oh my God, I was not expecting that. Ooh, but I do like the treadmill with the TV. That's something I would need. I can't just work out for the hell of it. Okay, coming back outside. Uh, So I'm kind of conflicted again. This house did get me a little bit excited because it had a few elements that I was really looking for, but it did have a few horrible things that I wasn't quite expecting to. It's another one of those mixes. So I don't know, this is definitely in the upper half though. I'm gonna give it a seven. I also think it's interesting how they made twins, but they also made them different. So like they have the same genetics, but they have like different body shapes, different hairstyles, different fashion styles, right? So it really kind of separates who they are, but it's still not to the level of say, you know, Nina and Dina Caliente. So I don't know, well done EA. Next up is the Handy Sims Dream. It certainly is. Look at the state of this lawn. This would not fly in any American homeowners association, I'll tell you that. But just because it's ugly, it's kind of intentionally ugly, which is something that I really look for and I really enjoy. I like how the siding is kind of like deteriorated. It looks like it's been worn away. It looks like it used to be a pretty purple, but it's just been like fallen into disrepair. I don't know, there's not a lot of windows on this house. My goodness, is this gonna be enough? I don't know. The roof is all right too. I like this little angled gable detail on the side side here. I think that's really clever. That's a nice way to cover up a bump out without like a weird half gabled roof sticking out. And there's still stuff to do. Like you can still go in the backyard. You can still use it. It's just kind of like a dilapidated house. And like if you are like a renovator, I know a lot of you don't like building, but a lot of you like to renovate houses. This might be a good option. And she's a thief, so she can steal a whole bunch of things for the house. Excellent. Okay, let's jump inside. Honestly, the inside looks more like a low income person as opposed to a fixer upper. Like it doesn't really look dilapidated. It just looks like a little bit empty and a little bit hoarder-ish. Like you've got like the stacks of newspapers. Again, we got stuff on the floor, the lamp with no end table kind of thing. I would have kind of preferred if the inside wallpaper was 
it's kind of like, you know, all worn away and stuff. Well, I guess it is. Like, this isn't really like the prettiest color. Maybe it was something else better before. Going in the bathroom, I notice in the creative style, like you can see how they're using like a more textured thing for like the porcelain on the tub and the toilet. So it looks a little bit more worn down. I guess when you get deep into the details, you can see it, which is, I guess, better than nothing. Ooh, even the fridge looks all messed up. I love it. Okay, going over here, kitchen sink, well done. Ugly cabinets, which would be perfect to renovate out of this stupid house. Why does she have two TVs and a stereo? Oh, right, because she's a criminal. She probably stole them. There's three TVs. I didn't even notice the one on the wall. My goodness, I love it. Oh my God, never four TVs. Look at this thing. I just, okay, I saw this before, but I thought it might be a mirror, but yeah, this is definitely a television. This thing is huge. This is for like an LA mansion and she has it smushed into her tiny little bedroom. Oh God, and in the garage, she has even more TVs. This house has more TVs than any mansion I've ever made. Well done. There's like two stereo. I'm gonna count this one second. One, two, three, four, five stereos and eight TVs, I think. Oh my God, that's a, that's that's definitely going for it. Now it's a nice detail, but there are better ways to show that like your sim is a thief and a criminal. It didn't have to all be TVs, but I do like the outside. I do like the concept. I think they did a really good job overall. Like, and this is probably the best that I've seen personally in terms of what I'm looking for in a build. I'm looking for variety. I'm looking for bold choices and I'm looking for sticking with the lore of the sim. And this kind of hit almost all of the marks in a decent way. I'm going to give it an eight. Do you believe this is like the highest score that we've given so far? I gave it to a dilapidated purple house run by some criminal. You know what? This is our first criminal who is not specifically Italian. So that's kind of good too, right? Next up is Magic Mansion. Wow, well done. Oh my God, I was terrified. Looking at this from like the world view, I thought, oh my God, it's like a chunky modern mansion that EA is gonna try to do. But looking through, I already love it. I love the floor to ceiling glass windows. That's very characteristic of this style of house. Ooh, and even the little thin ones on the side, that makes sense. Is this a skylight? My goodness, they have everything. Look at the back, even the back is pretty. They have a nice pool in the back. They have nice fountains lining up. This is literally how I build modern modern mansions, especially in The Sims 4, because it's a little bit easier to manage all these things. But well done. This must have took some planning. I like the landscaping. I like the three car garage. I like everything I'm seeing so far. This is what I'm talking about. This is a gray house. OK, let's jump inside and see what we get. OK, coming inside, we have hieroglyphics, bookshelves, art, a globe, plants, everything that I'm looking for in a mansion. Love it. This is a little bizarre. I don't know how I feel about this couch layout. I don't like how they're all the same couch couch with like the same end tables. It's a little bit boring, a little bit empty, but you know, maybe it's more of that minimalistic thing. But I don't know how I feel about sitting like in a way where like people are cut off by the fireplace, if that makes sense. Like if I'm in this seat and I can't see the people across from here, right? This kitchen is way too big, but it is a modern mansion. So it's normal, I guess. They have a kitchen sink, white appliances, not an ugly wood. Well done. Is this a fountain inside the house? My goodness, I love it. See, in this dining room, they can fit plants and a fountain, whereas EA usually doesn't put anything. Oh, thank God. Most of it's lofted, so we don't have to go too far. Okay, so going upstairs, we have way more bookshelves, another seating area. Usually mansions have several seating areas, especially in The Sims, so I guess that's fine. Bedroom is boring. Look at this bathroom. This is actually not too bad. I actually mentioned like tubs being on a platform or something, so here we go. We got that. And there's a privacy partition, so I don't really know like how you'd use that or need it, but it's like a nice little detail. I think there should be one like next to a closet or next to a bathtub. The toilet room is also separate, which I really like. It's separate in here too. And I've been to LA and quite a few of these kind of big houses do have separate toilet rooms within their bathrooms. Okay, going up even further, I don't hate this office area. This is kind of nice and different, a little bit exotic, right? And then over here is like a pool, but the pool is on the roof or actually not on the roof. It's on the fourth floor, but it looks down into the third floor. That's a nice little detail. We see this more commonly now in Sims 4 builds, but like back then, like this was new to us, right? This was exciting. And yeah, going upstairs, they have like similar style for the bathroom, same partition. I like how they keep the cohesion. There's no like abhorrently disgusting woods thrown all over the place. This is the master bedroom. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Oh my God, it's up on like this marble platform too. That's a nice little detail as well. Well done. Now I know I've been talking up this house, but unfortunately it's not like a perfect house. This is just the best house that we have seen and probably will see in Starlight Shores. So it got me a little bit excited, but if you place this in like Lucky Palms or something, it wouldn't be like at the top tier, but it's really interesting. It's got lots of 
details. They like they really paid attention to the colors, to the structure, to the architecture, to the idea, to the concept. But it's not quite a 10 for me. It needed a little extra kick for that. But I think I'm comfortable leaving it at 9.5. 9.5, thank goodness. Okay, so we're gonna pull up the average a little bit. But like looking from like the top view, this is probably the best mansion that we're gonna get unless we see a surprise later. So I don't know, let's keep going. Next up is Mono Mogul. I had to practice that 10 times before I said it, my goodness. Now looking at this house, it looks like a basic boring version of like that nicer Mediterranean house that we've already seen. It has similar details, the same wall, the same roofing kind of thing. Now looking around, the landscaping is all right. And I was expecting to be blown away because the, because like the lot description actually said like this house has great landscaping and it's beautiful inside. So you won't have to change anything. I disagree, but I do like the pond. I don't know if I like it that close to the house though like it looks like it's gonna cause some damage and I don't know if there's mosquitoes in LA but like where I live if you had like still water like this you would just get like a ton of mosquitoes going into your house I guess the trees are okay they have a lot of palm trees but like that's something you really have to plan in advance I guess now the one thing I noticed is that the fence it cuts off here like it just goes like to the back of the house but then doesn't close it off so that's a little bit peculiar I don't know why they avoided that but yeah let's jump inside and see how beautiful the inside is ew this is not what I was expecting at all actually you know what I was expecting this I was expecting green so there we go now that being said like I don't hate the furnishing or anything it's just not really what I expected it doesn't really seem that glamorous they said it's great for entertaining I would never have my guests see a room like this the kitchen is all right even though it has the ugly cabinets they have the fridge and the stove separate the kitchen sink is there that's nice going into the bathroom they at least have showers in this world thank goodness oh they have a separate toilet room that's a plus but it is kind of boring let's see like out here is the dining area which is outside which is kind of characteristic of the houses that we saw in Monte Vista and I guess it makes sense in LA as well but again like you don't have the back fence you don't have any privacy and the only other fence that you can see is like a see-through fence to like a business so mm, I don't know I was gonna say let's go upstairs but there is no upstairs let's go over here to the bedroom I guess oh my god this blue and this brown it's uh it's kind of hurting me it just doesn't look nice you know like looking from like the top like usually there's like a few colors I hate a few colors I love I don't love any of these colors I don't think blue and green go together. I don't think the woods are good. I don't like the rug. I don't like the bathroom. I don't like anything really. But that's all stylist stuff. Like in terms of efficiency, the floor plan is really efficient. It's nice and compact, not too cramped up. So like item wise, they chose the right things. They just didn't choose the right colors or textures. They have an ugly green car too. How many green cars? It's a sloppy jalopy that's green. My goodness. But yeah, like I don't really know what to say. Like what am I supposed to say? This is exactly what we expect from EA. A subpar Mediterranean house with horrible colors, subpar landscaping, and absolutely no story. So it's an EA 10, which means it's about at about a three or a four. Hmm, I don't know. It's actually not as ugly as some of the other ones. I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to rise above the horrific things that EA has done to us this episode. Next up is Neo Nuevo. That took a couple practices to say too. My goodness. Okay, so their story is these two are together and this is some loser who's crashing on their couch, but he's best friends with the guy and enemies with the girl so it's a little bit interesting now the house itself isn't really that interesting after seeing like that one modern mansion I'm really disappointed in this style I think any simmer could make a few rectangles and do something just as good the landscaping is kind of boring let's look at the back mm, I guess the the rounded pool is kind of nice it's not like a circle it's like a little bit of an oval shape and like uh, I don't know but like usually LA pools are not this shape like if they're curved they're kind of like curved in different areas and making it a little bit more organic. Usually like uniform pools are kind of rectangly from what I've seen. And I like the black and white choice, I guess. I just don't like the way that they did it. I think they could have used like slightly different sidings or walls or something. I, I, I think I like the windows better than anything else. Oh my God, this is an indoor light, but it's used as an outside porch light. Okay, whatever. Okay, let's go inside. Ooh, okay. So I don't hate this orangey wood. I know this is not everybody's style and it looks a little peculiar in some builds, but here I think it looked like it works really well because we definitely needed a pop of color now that being said they just use like white for all the other offset furniture it's actually kind of interesting either like the floor is orange and the furniture is white or the floor is white and the furniture is an orange wood right eh, the kitchen is all right I don't see a garbage can though in the kitchen my goodness they pulled a little simsy once again okay this bedroom's a little bit small like the workout room there's a pool table in the garage they don't even have room for their cars in the garage because they stuck all this stuff in the garage well I guess it's kind of a small house for like a modern mansion style the bathroom is actually really nice. Why don't we look at this bathroom? Because it's like my favorite part of the 
whole build because you know it's just it's just my type of style okay and going upstairs we have a slightly better bedroom we have an, like another normal kind of bathroom hmm, I don't know it's just so uniform and uninspiring like I just I just don't get the feeling you know and I just like to mention that like I'm usually a blue fan and I've hated most of the blues that they've used so far and this bed is no exception I mean I don't know what to say like I don't know what I'm supposed to say like it's definitely like in the style of LA in fact probably more so than some of the other houses some of them were a little bit too suburban-y for my taste and when I think of LA I do think of Mediterranean or I think of modern that's usually kind of like especially out like in the hills like the kind of houses that you see but this just isn't gonna cut it it doesn't really have any details doesn't really have style it's just so generic it almost seems like it's an empty unoccupied EA house eh, but I did like the wood floor I don't know I'm gonna give this one a four as well this is so disappointing like I was expecting something a little bit better I thought Neo Nuevo Ooh, it's gonna be chic and modern nope no, it's just boring EA ugly. Next up is Prospect. Prospecte? Prospect? I'm not sure. Okay, I was not expecting this, this kind of wood exterior, but I have seen mansions that do look like this in real life. That being said, this thing is stupid long. Like, look how big this thing is, and it's just for one sim. I know she's like an heiress or whatever, but my goodness, like, I don't know how this floor plan is gonna go. Now, looking at the outside, like, I was kind of excited from the roof because I thought it was gonna be a nice, sleek, modern mansion like the one that we've already seen, but then as you get into the side, it is a little bit more old fashioned, which is fine because a lot of houses in LA are a little bit older, but it doesn't really look like a house. It looks more like a community lot or maybe like a hotel once again. I don't know how I feel about it. Going to the back, I really like the pool area. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be, but like I would like sit on it and like hang out or I'd put my drink on it, you know, like my cocktail, my martini because I'm rich and famous. Oh God, you guys better hope I don't blow up. I'm going to be obnoxious and awful. I do like the courtyard though. Like that's kind of a nice detail. I didn't even notice that until I came up here okay let's jump inside okay I don't even feel the need to really zoom in on this house because I think we can get everything from the bird's eye view now I really like this wooden area here I like this orangey wood floor it's kind of nice it changes direction abruptly at the kitchen which I don't think is very good or realistic I would just have it go right through the same way and then going into every other room they have these like kind of flat boring floors like weird beiges that I've never really seen inside of a house before there's lots of stuff to do like there's a karaoke machine there's like stereos there's like places to read there's lots of TVs but it just doesn't seem exciting or ritzy it just seems like they didn't really have any direction for the inside like the courtyard is definitely the best part and then the bedrooms are all boring like why are these bedrooms all the same you know like I mean like I can't even pinpoint which one is like the master suite which is kind of a problem when it comes to a bigger house oh god she has these arrow things too I did not expect that actually you know what she's kind of a diva right so she got like the singing statue she has the arrows pointing to the mirror of the picture of herself so I guess I understand the concept that might be like the best thing in the build so far but yeah I don't know like I've made this argument like way back in my Sunset Valley review days like almost a year ago and one of the things I said about the land grab mansion is that when you're playing the rich family you want to feel it right you want to feel like you're the rich bitch and like I only get that from one room in our house I don't like the outside I don't like most of the inside it's structurally really good I like the architecture like the roof being raised in certain places with platforms or with freezes but like as a whole this is really weak for a mansion even for EA and in the lot description it said it has a wow factor and I completely disagree I was scared it was going to be a wow factor in the negative way but at least it didn't completely gross me out I'm going to give it a five I just don't understand I just don't get it like if this is supposed to be based off of LA like why didn't you go for it like LA has some of the most outlandish ritzy architecture in the entire world. Even Rich Ugly would be a nice surprise at this point. Next up is Quaint Cottage. Okay, so this is like a grandmother and grandson sim, and this house is definitely grandma's house. I love the flowers leading up to the driveway. Oh God, she has an ugly green car too, whatever. But looking back at the house, we have like beautiful pink rose bushes, beautiful landscaping, beautiful white picket fence around the property. It has a garden. She likes gardening at least. And they don't always do this. I haven't mentioned this, but they actually have a back gate here, and that's really helpful for just kind of getting your sims around the property, especially if it's a little bit bigger 
bigger like this. I'm just gonna check the garage first. What's in the garage? Anything interesting? Oh, good, a purple car. Well, at least she doesn't just have a green car. But yeah, I'm actually a little bit excited. I'm hoping to see like a splash of grandma, right? Because it is her house and he's just kind of living with her. So let's jump inside. Oh yes, grandma's living room. We got the pink floral Victorian couches kind of surrounded around a fireplace and a TV. It's a little bit jumbled, but I don't hate it. It's actually kind of really characteristic of what I would see in a grandmother's house. Going into the dining room, I kind of like it. I wish there was a little bit more furniture, of course, but at least they have the lamp and the plants and the chandelier is centered. I have not been talking about uncentered chandeliers because they have been ubiquitous in this world. Okay, going into the kitchen, the light blue kitchen is also very grandma. Oh, look at this thing on the wall. That's really nice. That's really indicative of the style. They have the cookie jars. They have like the wooden like utensils for the oven and her room like she's kind of posh. It looks like she has like her makeup, her perfume, her vanity. I kind of like it. This is very vintage glamour stuff. It's right up my alley. Unfortunately, we have a showerless house once again with just a bathtub, but I guess that's okay. Going into the grandson's bedroom, it's like completely stark and contrasty, but it's exactly who he is. He's supposed to be like a gamer sim, like someone who stays reclused in his room playing video games, which is something that I do. And you can see that I have all sorts of weird colors in my room and so does he. I wouldn't have a zebra print comforter because I have taste, but you get the idea. And yeah, looking at it from like a whole, like it's kind of nice because like when you're like managing your sims, it's nice to know like which room is which without having to like really investigate it. Sometimes when you have a house that has too much cohesion, then you like everything blends in together. Like you can't tell what's the living room, what's the dining room, what's the kitchen. And here it's remarkably clear without it being too contrasty and ugly. In fact, the only contrasty thing is the bedroom, which I already explained. So well done. Yeah, and coming back outside, the roof is good. I don't like the siding. I wish they picked a different siding. I like that it's white. I just don't like the shingles necessarily, but I guess it goes with the style. They have like a nice fireplace detail. The landscaping is gorgeous. The inside makes sense. I don't know. It's pretty strong and it's definitely one of the strongest that we've seen and are probably going to see. So I'm going to give it a nine. I just remember the episodes when it being grandma's house was like a bad thing. I'm like, oh no, it's going to be like ugly and old fashioned. But now I'm hoping for it after some of the things we've already witnessed. Oh, well, only one more to go. Let's see. And last but not least is refined residence. Barf. A, B, C, D, primary, H, I, J, K, I don't know color theory. Yeah, so this is like primary colors 101. The blue is a little bit softer than that, but like the red, blue, and white do not go together. They're not the flag red, white, and blue. They're not really anything. It's just not really for me. Oh, red columns? Really? Actually, you know what? Like it, it, it isn't so much the colors. It's just the proportions of them. I would have done the white as the primary, and then I would have done the blue and the reds just to like accent and offset. This is a little bit too much. And especially after coming out of Aurora Skies where we saw all sorts of weird colorful houses and most of them weren't horrendous, this is a little disappointing. But looking past that, it just looks like a blocky regular EA house, right? Hmm, I don't know. Okay, let's see what they did inside. I'm actually terrified. Oh, I shouldn't have been terrified. This is much nicer. Okay, well, speaking of primary colors, here's the yellow. It all ended up inside. But I mean, if you ignore the exterior, I really enjoy the inside. I really love this wooden floor. I love the layout of the furniture. I love the red wall in the dining room and kitchen too. My goodness, that's very pretty. The kitchen is functional and laid out well, but I would have picked maybe a slightly different wood. Hmm, I don't know. Going into the bedroom, black and white kind of works well with this wood too. This is a versatile wood. You know what? I'm going to steal this for later in one of my builds. Hmm, the bathroom doesn't really have anything in it. Well, it does have a shower at least, but it doesn't have any towel racks or like any clutter or anything. Going in here, why do you have two of the ugliest bookshelves in the game in the same room? That's important. Oh, and there's like a weird brown wall here. How big is this? Hmm, they made the whole corner brown. Why would you put brown with yellow, right? Like it looks like it should be in a toilet, not on your wall. But if I rotate back around to like my original angle, I really like it. Looking at it from the top, I think it's a good layout. The colors are good. It's laid out perfectly. I like some of the furniture choices as well. Like they didn't choose the ugliest dining chairs and the ugliest fridge like they normally do. However, they did pick the ugliest bookshelf twice and they hid the pretty one like behind it. That's so unfortunate. Oh yeah. But coming back outside, I forgot about the outside already. I was trying to repress the memory, I guess. Now, this is kind of an interesting case because I think this is the worst exterior that we've seen probably in several worlds, probably since Sunset Valley, if I'm honest. But the inside was like the strongest. Like I would have been happy with that inside in so many of the other houses. Why is it always one or the other? It's never both. Like we never, ever get like perfect outside and perfect inside. And when we do get one of them, they just screw up the other. And honestly, I'm giving them a 
nine for the inside and like a zero for the outside. So what does that average out to? 4.5? That's it. Four seems to be my new favorite number in Starlight Shores. So I don't know. I guess we'll have to see what happens next episode if we keep consistent. Well, that does it for the first half of Starlight Shores. I can't believe we had so many ugly houses back to back. Now, you guys said it was going to be bad, but I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Now, that being said, it's still like one of my favorite expansion packs. The world may not be the best, but you don't have to do the Showtime stuff in Starlight Shores. And in fact, I always kind of liked Starlight Shores because it was on the smaller end. I could always kind of get around the city easily. I always knew where my Sims were, but there's like way more houses in this world than I anticipated. So we did 14 and we only have 13 more to go. And that does include some of the nice Hollywood mansions up on the hill, which I'm excited to get to. So maybe we'll see something pretty in the next episode. In the meantime, don't forget to head over to my community tab where you can vote on a different world. Hopefully it's going to be a little less ugly than this one. But yeah, thanks again. That does it for the first half. We'll see you in the next one. Boom.